Welcome to all of the Africa Center alumni uh, who are joining us today virtually um, for this webinar on countering transnational organized crime entitled Understanding Resilience to Transnational Organized Crime, the Roles of Law Enforcement, Justice, and Their Coordination. My name is Dr. Catherine Lena Kelly. I am the Associate Professor of Justice and Rule of Law at the Africa Center for Strategic Studies, and I am pleased to be the moderator of this webinar today. Let me just say before we start, although we cannot all see each other today, um, let me commend the enthusiasm of those uh, who have joined us from all over the alumni community. You represent quite a few different countries across the continent with a variety of experiences on law enforcement, justice, and countering transnational organized crime. Um, so we're very pleased to have each and every one of you with us this afternoon. This webinar is the fifth in the Africa Center's monthly webinar series about professional development for countering transnational organized crime in Africa. We have been offering these webinars since October 2020, and thank you to those of you who have attended previous webinars in this series. In addition, let me heartily welcome newcomers to this series. Those of you with us today have different backgrounds, experience, and knowledge about transnational organized crime, but no experience uh, background or knowledge with this issue is actually required for you to participate in these webinars. However, there are also alumni in the audience who we realize have some extensive experience in this domain. So the webinars have been designed with such an understanding um, of this diverse audience, and we have the aim of nurturing peer learning um, um, and expanding understanding through these webinars. For those of you with limited knowledge about transnational organized crime, I urge you to ask questions um, in the chat that will help all of us um, improve our understanding of transnational organized crime. And for those who have a wealth of experience, we encourage you to share with us some of those experiences and perspectives that you might have. Very briefly on the Africa Center, um, all of you know it as alumni, but um, these webinars are informed by our mission of advancing African security by expanding understanding, providing a trusted platform for dialogue, building enduring partnerships, and catalyzing strategic solutions. The mission is guided by our vision to advance security for all Africans championed by effective institutions that are accountable to their citizens. So we hope that your participation in this webinar and maybe even the series will contribute to advancing security for all Africans by countering TOC, transnational organized crime in Africa. So just to remind you about the series and for the benefit of those who may be new to the series, this webinar series has a couple of objectives. We hope that by bringing you um, expert speakers from different parts of the continent on these issues that we will expand understanding of transnational organized crime on the continent and ways to counter it. We hope we can facilitate strategic diagnosis of and response to transnational organized crime. We're also hoping to introduce you um, to some new data on transnational organized crime in Africa and the methods and approaches for monitoring transnational organized crime. And of course, we're hoping that we will also generate new practical insights on how to build and strengthen resilience of African states to transnational organized crime. You know, in, in the past um, four in this series, our first webinar focused on understanding the magnitude and the prevalence of transnational organized crime in African countries by introducing the ENACT Consortium's Organized Crime Index. Uh, the second webinar then focused on some key elements of how we diagnose transnational organized crime challenges, looking at different criminal actors and criminal markets that are involved in transnational organized crime in Africa and how they work over time and space. The third webinar gave us a deeper look at the kinds of vulnerabilities that some different African states face in relation to transnational organized crime. And then today's webinar um, is part of several in this series that are looking at African states' resilience. How do we build resilience to transnational organized crime? Um, our previous webinar in this series in January looked at the role of legal and policy frameworks, as well as political leadership and governance as sources of African state resilience. Today, we're looking at three other resilience factors that can influence how African states address transnational organized crime. And again, these resilience factors come from the ENACT Organized Crime Index for Africa, an important open source of data that we explained um, in earlier webinars. Um, so we'll be looking at um, law enforcement, 
capacity, justice, and um, the question of coordination as well in relation to how resilience works. We hope that by the end of the webinar series, we will uh, be able to understand the various actors in the fight against uh, transnational crime. Uh, this is very important to have a better resilience and to reinforce uh, the uh, capacity of states to uh, focus on territorial integrity, also territorial sovereignty. And we want to examine why these actors, how these actors can uh, uh, have a part in reinforcing the resilience of different states. We also hope to focus on a few key elements uh, regarding resilience. And we want to identify some of the challenges uh, that African nations face so they can better function and fight against this criminal aspect. So I am delighted to welcome to us two experts in the field who uh, will speak to us on these issues. You have their biographies on the website of our uh, website. I will mention a few things only from their biography. Mr. Bryce Severin Pongui is a lawyer at the Brazzaville Bar and Ombudsman at the Center for Mediation and Arbitration of Congo, as well as a consultant for the International Program of the U.S. Forest Service in the Republic of Congo uh, on a project on countering illegal logging in the Republic of Congo, in Cameroon and in Gabon. He has been a lawyer, counsel, and advocate, and a consultant and trainer in many areas of law since 2009, including environmental law, marine law, contract law, administrative law, intellectual property law, land law, land and planning law, real estate law. <laughs> he also is the honorary president of the Green Brain Institute 2063, an NGO that works to help implement the African Union's Agenda 2063. Uh, Mr. Pongi, can you explain to us about how the judicial capabilities in the Republic of Congo and the neighboring countries in, uh, has an influence on the fight against transnational organized crime? I know that is your specialty in terms of illegal logging. So you have seven minutes to answer the question. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Catherine, for the opportunity to take the floor and speak to all of the uh, alumni of the African Center. Uh, this is so important. Very quickly, I will try to give an answer to this question. I would like to have you recall that my question is in the context of um, illegal logging. That is the focus of my um, response. I would like to specify also that this question is important, so important, even though judges and magistrates, uh, I'm speaking of the judges as well as the prosecutors, even if they are not really involved currently on the uh, rules of the, and, and they're not immediately implicated in the uh, law, in the judicial proceedings and the lawsuits currently, because our forestry laws currently um, allows the forestry department to deal with all uh, uh, lawsuits and uh, judicial proceedings. So they are the ones, it's the uh, forestry uh, department and agency of our government that has the direct uh, uh, responsibility for this, for these uh, different transactions that take place, uh, difficulties. 
So when there is the need for uh, judges to enter the program to fight uh, uh, forestry crime, uh, it's not, they're not directly involved. And this, uh, this presents an, an obstacle, of course, for us. So, uh, but it also gives us a, it helps the judges and the magistrates though to, to continue to fight against uh, forestry crime because there is discussion between these two entities. So if somebody, um, if somebody is guilty of violations of the, the rules, the judge or the magistrate can then um, intervene in a situation if the forestry agency indicates there have been uh, numerous violations. And so our project seeks to, to um, encourage justice to be implicated and involved because we cannot limit ourselves to just, we cannot simply depend on the forestry agency to fight the, crim the criminal aspect of these violations. And we have to have uh, the judiciary be more involved, but the judiciary needs to be better informed or the judges need to be better informed and better understand these violations and what they represent. So they are better prepared, so they are better qualified to rule on these affairs. And these uh, magistrates and the judges also and prosecutors need to work with the other persons involved in the uh, uh, law enforcement. Uh, because the transnational national transnational organized crime is a big element of this and it leads to corruption it leads to money laundering issues um, so it is very important for all of these actors to come together and work together and uh, so there can be a better response to uh, fight against this criminal criminal effort and I think uh, we look at these things case by case because there are certain violations for which uh, the uh, forestry association can be more efficient. Uh, sometimes it's better for the forestry uh, agency to act upon a violation um, to in insist that uh, that the law is followed properly. And, but there are times for certain violations where we need the help of the judiciary. If the violations are really, really terrible, and uh, at that point, it's really important for the judges to intervene so that the uh, damages that have been inflicted upon the state can be uh, properly responded to. And so it's important that the judicial capabilities be uh, ready to provide the proper response to these infractions. But as you, there's also uh, the, the fact, as you know, that the magistrates and the judges and the prosecutors play an important role in enforcing the law and, and to, ensure that we can fight uh, this phenomena of illegal logging. Thank you so much. Another question for you. What kind of criminal actors are involved in the uh, illegal logging in Congo, Gabon, and Cameroon? And also, what are the tools that these act African actors have uh, from the uh, security and judiciary sectors to fight against this illegal logging. Yes, it's very interesting. It's true that there have been uh, for a few years studies made on criminality, transnational organized crime in Central Africa, but we were really looking more on the problems of the wildlife, the, the 
and the and also the the fauna uh, in terms of illegal logging we are working on preventing these illegal acts you, there are reports that indicate there have been cases of uh, trafficking of illegal timber and more more specifically in Congo, Cameroon, and so forth. So to answer your question, in terms of what concerns the actors who are associated with this, they, uh, they belong in different categories. First, you have the private actors, as I was saying earlier, uh, crime, transnational crime in terms of forestry uh, has different levels of violations and fractions. And sometimes they are uh, undertaken by networks, international networks of criminals. And uh, uh, pe people can have connections with these networks at the national level, at the borders. And there is also, when I speak of the private sector, there's also the contractors the subcontractors that can be involved, those who transport the timber, for example, are part of this uh, transnational organized crime. And when I speak of the public actors, I am speaking first of certain, certain agents of the state, whether they are customs officers or the police that also are susceptible to be involved in within these uh, uh, criminal networks. And there are certain act political actors also who might have personal interests in, in this illegal trafficking. So in the within our project, we are working so that so that we have uh, taken into account all of these actors so they and we try to uh, stop their actions whether the actors be private or public and in uh, and they as they are participating in this uh, transnational uh, uh, transnational network of illegal illegal logging and then also there are tools to answer your second question there are cl uh, class there are tools classic tools that we have such as cooperation and within the uh, forestry association we have an org a sub-regional organization that we call comifac it's a commission for uh, forestry for central africa we have an accord a treater amongst us and uh, this treaty uh helps us to uh surveil and to over helps us with oversight of all of these illegal activities because we must not forget then we must recall that to be completely efficient the actions against uh, illegal logging must we must all uh, speak with each other between the states, the nations. We must uh, be sure that the timber cannot uh, go from one country to another, for example, from Congo to Cameroon. So we need this cooperation between the states to ensure that the law can be uh, applied. And But there is not only this mechanism in terms of forestry protection, there are also tools that are available, even if they're not always used in the judiciary in Central Africa, we have, we have, uh, for example, in the case of CIMAC, it's a sub-regional accord, which helps the states cooperate in the domain of of uh, training and things of that nature. We also have accords, as I was saying earlier, treaties. Today, we cannot disassociate and separate the illegal logging with um, other uh, illegal uh, activities. And, and, and in, in the Congo, we have a national agency that is part of the task force of the different countries 
that allow that really supports us uh, in the co uh, in Congo, and we have our counterparts in Cameroon, and therefore we can communicate and help each other, support each other uh, in the fight against transnational crime. And I would like to finish by saying that uh, this is part of the resilience of the state. Uh, transnational organized crime in the fight against TOC. Uh, there are actors fighting against this. We want, but the, the criminals also learn to adapt to our efforts. So we have an important uh, tool called EGA. These are alerts, warning system that we have that we use with satellites to be able to uh, see um, losses in the uh, forests. Uh, we can see where there's been deforestation. And so it is the local populations also who are great uh, support to us because they often know what is going on, on in the field. So the Forestry Association um, has these tools that are difficult sometimes to put into action because uh, you have to use a mobile a phones, you, some parts of the country are not connected uh, uh, for this kind of communication. But we do try to implicate all of the actors, for example, civil society, so that we have a better sharing of information and to better understand what might be taking place um, on in the field, on the ground. Thank you so much to have uh, brought into place the different actors implicated, involved, and then also speak of uh, different uh, tools you have at your disposal. Another question. The actors of the judiciary must often work with the gendarmerie, with the police in the fight against uh, TOC, so for a good coordination and so that the uh, criminal networks uh, uh, can be fought against. So what can African leaders do within the sector of security justice who wish to uh, re strengthen the coordination between these different uh, uh, domains? Uh, quickly, I will say that uh, for the participants, um, uh, in terms of the Congo, uh, the Congo Brazzaville, uh, it's it's Congo Brazzaville. It's important to recognize that. So we can we can we don't uh, pretend to have. Uh, solutions that can be applied uniformly in every case. But as I was saying earlier, uh, uh, speaking amongst each other is very important. Coordination, consultation amongst actors is so important. We have to have a national coordination, consultation between the different actors that are involved in the fight against crime and in the fight against forestry crime. And this is necessary. It's so important that all the actors come together and work together. And this is what our project is currently trying to implement. Uh, we are trying to bring together uh, the Forestry Association, the Customs Bureau, uh, the, just, the judiciary with the judges, the Transportation uh, Department, and also the National Agency of uh, financial uh, finances that works upon this, but also the actors of uh, civil society who are working uh, on monitoring the situation on 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 uh, oversight. And uh, we have two different. We have two. We, in Congo, we have two organizations that help uh, uh, to to do this, to observe this. Uh, and uh, one from the state and one from outside the state to be able to work together, all of these actors together 
we work together. We 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 have uh, think tanks together to try to find ways to address these problems. So to summarize, what I could give as a counsel and advice is to first of all work together, cooperate, work together, so that each actor can give their perspective to the problem. As I was saying, I hate to repeat myself, but it is so important for states to uh, to respond to these uh, forestry violations of the law separately from the law, separately from the judiciary. This we have lived through this experience in the Congo already in terms of uh, uh, wildlife that the laws were to the 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 laws were too weak the judges don't always understand the so importance of these infractions some infractions for example in the past uh towards wildlife fauna in the past sometimes the judge was able to um uh were able to respond to criminal acts um, were able to respond to them at different levels. And it's important that the states understand the importance that of each of these violations, whether they be uh, concerning uh, forestry or other, that they all lead to corruption. They And the state must understand what is the sentence that must be applied? What will be the punishment for each of these uh, violations? It's very important for, to these infractions. And then we have to train people. We must train the, the judges. We must train the prosecutors uh, uh, in terms of uh, crimes of uh, deforestation and illegal logging. It's so important so that the uh, um, crimes can be properly uh, pursued and the sentences can be aligned with the crimes. It's very difficult sometimes to for a, a judge to do his work well if he has not been well formed or she has not been well formed in terms of uh, criminal law pertaining to forestry. And this is uh, what uh, I advise to states who wish to fight against transnational organized crime in terms of the in the domain of forestry, illegal logging. Thank you so much for your answers.